Hey guys, I'm here today with a collaborative project by Network 1901 called Pixar Perceptions, where a group of Disney video essayists are analyzing a scene from Pixar that we find significant. So, after you listen to me ramble on about the best superhero movie ever, The Incredibles, check out the playlist in the comments below to see what Watso videos, Cult Popture, Behind the Curtain, and Network 1901 have to say about their favorite Pixar scenes. And if you feel compelled to join in the fun too, you are totally invited to participate. Make your video and post it on Twitter using hashtag PixarPerception and make sure you tag at Network1901 so the wonderful Mr. Josh can get you into the playlist. You have McGann, the fangirl. Make sure you subscribe and check back every week for new fandom videos. With the release of Toy Story 4, we will have over 20 Pixar films in the world, and, as you may have heard me say before, the worst Pixar movie is better than most studios' best films. So, trying to narrow down one scene to analyze was a very difficult task for me, but I ultimately went with my great true love in film, The Incredibles. The Incredibles is really dark for a kid's movie, we have extremely well-developed character motives, and the interpersonal relationships are just phenomenally done. However, I want to pick apart a strange detail that fits awkwardly into the film and how that might be telling a sub-story we've never noticed, and that is the discovery of Gazer Beam's body, and how Pixar tells the biggest stories with the smallest details. This might just be me being a weird fangirl here, but I've been racking my brain trying to understand what happened to Gazer Beam. I know, on the surface he was Simon J. Palladino, the man who was listening as a missing superhero advocate in the paper, and that Mr. Incredible found his body in this grotto-type place on Syndrome's Island, so he's dead. But what actually caused him to die here in this position? I mean, Syndrome attempted to blow up Mr. Incredible, but Buddy Pine is a really smart guy. He surely knows that a blast in water is unlikely to cause major bodily damage because water absorbs and displaces a lot of the power in a blast. So you'd get the force to move the water, but not much reason to suspect it would kill a person who had any reaction speed to move out of the way. And understanding that a water blast isn't typically lethal helps to explain why Syndrome sent out a scanning probe to figure out if Mr. Incredible actually bit the dust, or uh, H2O. But even though Syndrome seems smugly satisfied with himself when the probe detects no signs of life, is that really what he wanted? To kill Mr. Incredible? while he was in the middle of gloating? Maybe it was, but I tend to believe that Syndrome was playing a game of cat and mouse. He believed that Mr. Incredible, aka Bob Parr, was the best of the supers, so to destroy him so easily wouldn't be gratifying at all. In fact, we know Syndrome didn't want Mr. I dead because later in the movie, Syndrome gushes about how much fun he was having playing this game. I, I, I always knew you were tough, but tricking the probe by hiding out of the bones of another super? Oh man! I'm still geeking out about it! So, despite the fact that Syndrome looks like he believes his probe, I think he's aware the blast didn't kill Bob. He doesn't care. It doesn't matter because, one, he's just going to use that information to make the probe better, and two, since the probe knew to go straight to that cavern, that smug look tells me that he got Mr. Incredible right where he wanted him. The probe issue also puts out an interesting scenario with Gazer Beam. For all intents and purposes, Gazer Beam ended up in the same location as Mr. Incredible, which leads me to believe that Gazer Beam was put in a similar situation of running from Syndrome and getting an underwater blast. Huh, but that doesn't necessarily make sense because Mr. Incredible only ended up in the water after being accidentally flung by Syndrome, so we have no reason to believe that this waterfall or this cavern would be a sensible route for Gazer Beam to take. And as Gazer Beam etched Kronos into the stone before he died, it makes the entire thing even weirder. Weirder. Obviously, having the password suggests that Gazer Beam got into Syndrome's computer and knew his plan with the Omnidroid, but the computer also states that Gazer Beam was killed by a previous version of the Killbot, so why did we find his body just hanging out in this secret cavern? The hole Mr. Incredible comes through, which appears to be the only way in or out of that area, is definitely too small for any droids to get through, so for Gazer Beam to leave behind Kronos means that the Omnidroid didn't 
didn't kill him. It was literally impossible for that scenario to happen, so why does the computer lie? And sure, we don't know what Syndrome does with the corpses of the murdered heroes, but he seems like the type to recover the bodies and be 100% sure they're dead. Plus, if anyone's body should vanish from the island and wash up on shore, it could lead unwanted attention to Syndrome's base of operations, so yeah. It's all a little too convenient for Bob to find his missing friend's remains on this fairly large island. I also struggle to understand how we start the movie with Bob reading about Gazer Beam being missing, and a few months later we see Gazer Beam is only a skeleton that looks like it's been sitting there for a decade. And yes, we can confirm it has only been a few months because Bob was reading about the disappearance of Simon J. Palladino a day or so before he was fired from InsuraCare, and when Helen calls looking for her missing husband, the lady on the phone from InsuraCare informs her that Bob Parr stopped working there two months ago. He's on a business trip. A company retreat. My records say his employment was terminated almost two months ago. So you're telling me after two months, Gazer Beam looks like this with no hint of predators in that cavern to pick his bones clean? Something just doesn't mesh with this detail. Finding a full skeleton is so bizarre. That means Gazer Beam wasn't blown up and the machine didn't tear him apart. In fact, his shredded clothing implies to me that Gazer Beam took a flesh wound and ripped his own suit to make a tourniquet, assuming that is that his suit wasn't made of Mega Mesh. If it was Mega Mesh, then the droid must have ripped it, since that's the only thing we know to be capable of ripping that material. But based on everything we see in that cavern, the scanning probe should have detected that Gazer Beam was still alive because he had time to not only get himself sitting upright, but to burn a password into the wall. And how would Gazer Beam have gotten a hold of Syndrome's password to burn Kronos into the rocks? Again, Syndrome is no dummy. He he would have changed his password if Gazer Beam had gotten onto the computer, and surely he has a security log to be aware of any unauthorized logins. Not to mention, the password is pretty useless, isn't it? Syndrome is already revealed to be the bad guy, and logging onto the computer only reconfirms that fact. It doesn't really help any future supers stop Syndrome's plans. Not to mention, not to mention, for another super to even find that password, they'd have to be in a dire situation with very little hope of success anyway so what's the point? Isn't this entire setup odd? We're given a plethora of evidence in that scene. However, we're supposed to believe that a major superhero like Gazer Beam just sat there and waited to die? He never tried to escape and just decided it was better to die of his injuries or starve to death rather than fight back? I understand that Gazer Beam's situation seemed lose-lose with no right or easy answer, but I have a hard time believing that any superhero is just going to give Give up and resign to die in that dank pit. Mr. Incredible got back out and got back into Syndrome's lair without even being detected. So what the heck, Gazer Beam? But actually, if we think about it, all that password does is put Mr. Incredible in a complete panic because he sees that all of his former colleagues are now dead at the hands of Syndrome. So did Gazer Beam really leave that behind to help the next super? Overall, the goal of logging onto the computer was not to get information information, but to get Bob back in Syndrome's lair. Think about this. With all this high-tech gear everywhere, and these snitch birds that wasted no time finding anyone else, the security system only went off when Mr. Incredible's tracking beacon was activated, meaning someone wanted Mr. Incredible to see everything on that computer, but they didn't want him to be able to share that information. This is reconfirmed later when Syndrome is carrying on claiming that Mr. Incredible ruined the ride by calling for help. And then he had to just go and ruin the ride. I mean, Mr. Incredible calling for help? Help me, help me. <laughs> lame, 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 lame. And that all suggests that Syndrome not only knew that Mr. Incredible survived, but he had set up and allowed for Mr. Incredible to go on that computer with no interference. And in turn, that means Syndrome also placed that skeleton and password in the cavern as a way to lure Mr. Incredible back to their lair and make him afraid slash in awe of the elaborate game Buddy had designed. Remember, Buddy is highly aware of how heroes and villains interact. He even uses the fantastic term monologuing like that's industry slang. 
You sly dog! You got me monologuing! I can't believe it! Buddy has studied and planned for this moment with Mr. Incredible, and he wouldn't leave anything to chance. So, I'd bet you that there are similar superhero skeletons all over the island that have the word Kronos near their body. That's the only excuse that covers why Syndrome would be so sloppy with disposing of superhero bodies when we've seen how meticulous he is about everything else. And I really doubt those bodies are even real. Like, I don't think that could possibly be the legitimate remains of Gazer Beam. It's more likely a fake skeleton wearing the costume of a fallen super. Because truly, even if you hate supers, leaving the body out to rot is just careless. And Buddy didn't really hate the superheroes, he still somewhat idolized them or he wouldn't be angry. The opposite of love isn't hate, it's indifference. So to care enough to bait and trap all these supers shows a desperate need for their approval. That's why Syndrome has to show them up and reveal himself before they can die. They're forced to be very aware that they've been bested by Buddy Pine. But with his level of dedication, I would imagine that any super's remains would be properly laid to rest. Maybe I'm giving Syndrome too much credit, but I don't know. It seems like he'd love to be the sole attendee to all these funerals on his island as a way to subtly gloat on his technological superiority. Even throwing bodies in the volcano would at least hide the evidence from the next super that came. Nothing would look more suspicious than a hero coming to stop the Omnidroid, but instead stumbling onto the bodies of their friends. And to be able to lure all these supers to the island Island tells me that Buddy has been studying the psychology of heroes as much as he studied robotics, so he knows exactly how to manipulate all of them into doing whatever he wants. The only reason Mr. Incredible didn't die was because Syndrome didn't factor in that he would have a wife and children come to rescue him. From Syndrome's standpoint, Mr. Incredible only works alone. So for Syndrome to know that Gazer Beam is dead, but to leave his body out there to decay just makes zero sense when you have other supers coming to the island and going to unpredictable locations, but creating skeleton props to lure any supers out of hiding and back into the lair is an effective strategy for playing a twisted game of cat and mouse. And I think that's something that Pixar itself is meticulous enough to think about, because honestly, after Mr. Incredible finds Gazer Beam, it's never brought up again. He doesn't mention it, there's no show of body recovery, it's just like the movie doesn't even take it seriously as Gazer Gazer Beam's remains. And all these little hints are things that make me adore Pixar as a studio and especially their work with The Incredibles. It might not be reality, but theories are more fun. And don't forget to check out the playlist. And finally, thank you to Josh from Network 1901 for inviting me to work on this project. Bye guys! Well, that's all I have for now, but this video's not quite over yet. I get a lot of comments that say, do a theory on this topic, but I've already done those theories. So please consider going to my main channel page and clicking on the video tab so that way you can see everything I've done. You will probably find a lot of things you like that you never even knew that I posted. I want to let you know that I also have two other channels, Say Halo Goodbye Gaming and The Family Family Vlogs. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed enough to hit subscribe and share. I can use all the help I can get to let other people know that this channel exists. And if you made it this far, leave me a comment that says something like, hey, I made it to the end. And then let me know what kind of videos you want to see in the future. I can't make any promises, but the more people that request something, the more I can look into it. Okay, well, I love you. I'll see you in the next video.